Hi folks and welcome back here for another Cinema 4D tutorial. Today I'd like to share an English version of the Square Cubic tutorial by 2H3D Graphics. It's a release in French, so there were a couple of requests um, to do an English version, so I hope they don't mind me doing it. And actually it's all about recreating something like this uh, transition effect uh, made by Andrew Kramer with his uh, 3D element in After Effects. And we're going to do something similar in Cinema 4D. Okay, so the first thing we're going to create is just a cube. I, I think it was something like 30 centimeters in each direction. I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter. Uh, give it a fillet caps like one mm, more like so uh, okay um, so create a cloner drop your cube into your cloner and make a sphere like so Tell the sphere to be, uh, uh, I think it's icosahedron, and tell the cloner to be in object mode, and drag the sphere into the object slot. So now we have something like this, and um, we're going to set the up vector to plus y. And we're going to set the distribution to be uh, on the vertexes. So if you if you don't care about intersection, then you can leave it like this. But I don't like it. I'm going to scale down my cubes a bit. Twenty five, I think, will will make it here. Okay, well, it's looking okay. That's okay. Let's leave it like this. Um, switch off the visibility of your uh, sphere. Okay, now we're going to add the plane effector. Plane effector. Make sure the plane effector is added to your cloner. And by default, the plane effector is affecting everything and it's affecting the uh, Y position of our. Um, of our clones. So we want to use the fall off. Uh, we're going to tell the fall off to be in a square, square shape like this. And if you move around the effector, you can see what it's doing. Everything inside of the shape is affected. But we have to uh, resize our. Uh, resize our plane effector to something like 200 I think 200 should work let's see um, go to the parameters and change the um, position I'm going to use the set of that position bring it down maybe like so uh, go to the scale, go to uniform scale and try something like minus 0.4 maybe like so well just just play around with it you will find you will find a setting that's looking good I think right so if we move our uh, plane effector you can already uh, create a transition like this. Okay, but let's go to a fall off and use a, a spline curve here. Let's say something like this. Yeah, cool. So mm, that's looking not too bad. Let's add a little bit of rotation to this. Ah, that's what I was after. So now you see when the plane effector is going its way it will create a nice transition. 
So let's animate this in the first step here. Bring it back to zero. Let's go to frame 60 and set a keyframe for the position of the plane effector. And go back to frame zero and move it over, move it up, maybe here, somewhere around there. Maybe like this. And add a new keyframe. So when you play it back, you have already created your transition. So and now we're going to work with the uh, color settings. So go to your cloner, go to the transform settings and uh, here in the transform settings you can select the basic basic color for your clones. So let's set it to something black. Go to the plane effector and here in your plane effector you can use a color mode. Set it to user define and choose a new color. Let's use something bluish like so. So you have a, tra you have a transition for the colors as well. Go to the fall off, bring it down a bit, like 25. Yeah, that's, that's pretty close, I think. Cool. So, but what if, if you want to um, change not only the color, uh, but if you like, if you want to have some some kind of reflection on your material or a bump or a bump map or something, so just create a new material. Go to the color channel and select a MoGraph color shader. We're not going to change anything here, but we're going to add, let's say, a little specular is good and reflection, a little bit of reflection. Maybe ten percent, and for now we're forty percent, like so. So you're going to add it to your cube, and now you have uh, cubes with reflection on it. Um, let's create a sky real quick. Sky, make a sky material, something like a gradient. 2D we uh, change uh, grayish color like so. Maybe add some turbulence. Put it on our sky like so. Maybe tell the sky to be invisible, adding a compositing tag, uncheck scene by camera, add a background, I'll make a new material for the background, I'm going to use a gradient, a circular gradient, so the inside color should be something Dark, dark blue and the outside color is black like so uh, okay it's not looking too bad for me so and of course uh, it's always good to add a delay factor to your animation if you want some, uh, if you want to have some secondary wobbling effect so make sure it's added to the cloner, go to the delay effector, set it to spring and maybe 70% like so and let's play back. Yeah, not too bad. So what can we do? What else can we do? Maybe we can rotate our sphere a little bit. Maybe Let's try. 
like so. Go to the end of the animation and type 90 degrees. What do we have? Okay, cool. Well, folks, basically, I think that's it. My folks, no, that's not it. I want to share an update with you. There was a guy uh, watching my tutorial on Vimeo and he posted a comment. His name is Nimrod Regref. I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, but Nimrod, hello, you're in my tutorial now. And he mentioned um, that you can just use the standard sphere and extract uh, the splines and then use it as an object for your cloner, blah, blah, blah. And you will have a closer result. Uh, you will have a result that's closer to the video copilot stuff. And uh, so I will sh just real quick, I will show you how that works. And if you don't want to watch that uh, add-on or update here, you can just go to that link I've posted, and you can just download the scene file. Okay. So let's have a look in Cinema 4D. All we need is just a sphere, regular sphere. And just uh, hit C to make it editable, then choose the edge mode here, and we're going to use uh, the UL shortcut. UL is for uh, loop selection. So hit UL, and now, like so, oh. ah, there it is. So by uh, uh, pressing Shift, uh, you're just going to select all of them shift click right shift click uh -huh. Uh -huh. and one last one like so and now you go to mesh and go to comments and say edge to spline Oops. and once you did it you have a you have separated a spline object and you can get rid of the sphere we don't need that anymore so there you have a spline or multiple splines of course and so all the rest is nearly the same as I told you before uh, just make a new cloner with uh, you know a cube blah 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 uh, may I set the cloner, uh, cloner into the object mode and drag in the sphere object see anything okay uh, sorry uh, la, la. there it is so by default it looks like this uh, you have to add a target uh, target effector this is part of the MoGraph system the target effector should be just right in the access center if because all all of your clones will try to look at the uh, target effector so and you have to tell the cloner to um, use step distribution and set the step to something around 28 that will give you a very very good result actually well you have some intersection uh, but it's you know you can hide it just use the other side of your object and then you won't see anything of that and the rest is just nearly the same you have a plane effector plane effector uh, in a in uh, with the you know spherical fall off and um, one thing I want to mention is the, that position is now turned around it's not negative it's positive but the rest of of it is just exactly the same you can use uh, the color mode and change the color of your clones etc etc blah 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 so thanks Nimrod for mentioning that and see you soon bye bye